Hey everybody, Sean Tierney here from theautomationschool.com and in today's podcast we're going to take a look at the integrated architecture presentation, what's new in IA software that you can get free right over at ab.com. Now in the last episode of the Automation Minute I showed you how to get this presentation and how to get right here so I won't cover that again but um, all we have to do is see what's in this free presentation on their website is right click and open in a new tab and here it comes. And here it is. Let me go to full screen here and let's take a look at this together. Again, this is a free presentation made available to us by Rockwell Automation. We're just going to take a look at it together online here. And, um, and you can see all the stuff they're going to cover. My primary interest is Studio 5000. So let's go ahead and scroll down. It looks like they have some information about Architect, Logic Designer, View Designer, APM, and uh, System Software. So I'm just going to touch on some of these things, uh, please feel free to get a copy of the presentation we're looking at, just like I did, right from Rockwell's website, if you want to see all the gory details. But in any case, um, let's see here. 5000 Architect, well, it looks like it's come a long way, doesn't it? I mean, it's really integrated into the software now. Um, and I've never used it. I've heard some people say some great things about it. But um, I really would actually like to know what you think if you're using it, to get your thoughts and opinions on it. But in any case, uh, with the automation and ML integration, they can interact with third-party software. So you can see here ePlan and IEB interacting with Studio 5000. So I'd love to get Rockwell on the podcast to actually demo that to us because it's something, you know, as a full-time instructor, I just don't have the time to, to play with the stuff anymore. Um, with that said, Logics Designer, Studio 5000 Logics Designer version 31 is out. I'm hoping to get a copy of this in the next week or two. And let's go ahead and take a look at some of these slides. So what's new in 31? Well, common look and feel across all the applications. They modernized it. They improved workflows. We've talked about this in the past. Let's take a look at some specifics. So the first thing is the tabbed windows, right? And they have a nice example on this slide here where they actually show the guy taking this window from here and moving it over there so you can use multiple monitors. Now, I use multiple monitors in everything I do. It just makes editing videos and recording lessons. Like when I'm recording a lesson, I have notes on the bottom monitor and the software on the top monitor. And uh, that just makes everything so much easier for me because, you know, I'm an old man. I can't remember everything. And uh, when I'm editing video, I have the video preview on the top. And so multiple, multiple monitors, what I'm saying is, that's huge. If you're not using them, you're, you're missing out on some productivity. You could increase by having multiple monitors um, at your workstation. So in any case, they're just showing examples of how that would look. Um, you can see here, Logic Designer, the code editors, they try to make all of the indicators standard. So you know, if you see a red X, that it means the same thing as a problem. And now they're also showing how you can filter error messages here. So we got errors, warnings, and messages. That's huge because I almost never look at the warnings. A lot of the warnings, um, you know, are not applicable to what you're doing. You know, it's good information. You should review them, but a lot of times you don't. There's nothing there you need to address. Sometimes there is, but in any case, um, being able to filter them like that is huge, you know, just to see what you actually have to fix before you can download it. Um, Improvements to structured text. I like this a lot. Um, you know, I uh, I started back in uh, high school doing basic and doing, uh, or actually before high school, Pascal and other languages. And so having, um, you know, a new modern look, right? And a lot of this feels like it comes right out of Notepad++, right? Or Notepad++. Um, so you get line numbers. That is huge, right? That you can reference exactly where you want to go. You got collab, collab <laughs> you got collapsible sections, right? So if you have a case, right? Or an if then else, you can collapse it. So if, you know, if you're looking for something specific, um, you can collapse everything that that's that you don't need. And whenever I'm doing HTML or CSS or anything like that, I use that feature in Notepad++ all the time. So having that come into structured text is huge for me. I love to hear what you guys think about it, but uh, really, really, really huge. Um, you can see here uh, descriptive tool tips, multi-line select and mouse scrolling, um, change of verify bars, just a lot of great stuff. And uh, I love that they're improving that because it's a very powerful language, very flexible. And it's the fastest language, according to Rockwell. Um, 
function blocks. Man, this needed <laughs> after using the micro 800 and doing, you know, a course on that and, and using its function blocks, going back to Studio 5000, those and RS Logix 5000, those function blocks actually looked pretty dated. So this is a pretty huge thing. And um, just looking at this, I want to I want to use it because uh, it just looks a lot better. And um, you know, if you already have 31, then you've already seen this. I'm assuming I don't have 31. Hope to get it in the next couple of weeks. But um, in any case, um, ability to change the sheet size while online, incremental routing algorithm updates, forcing I/O tags from the context menu. That's huge. That is huge. Um, Direct operand value modification, that's also huge. Um, you know, these are just things that are frustrating that, you know, you try because you're like, oh, this should work and it doesn't. So now that they put that in there, that is, that's pretty huge. And look at the look, it just looks cleaner um, and more modern. Uh, you know, it was getting actually getting kind of dated. Now, the new logic tag based alarms, that's something new. And uh, I believe it's in 31. I'd have to check that. Yeah, it is right here. See? Right there, it says it right there. Um, so they've added that, and now they've added the ability to use that with um, Factory Talk View, um, and they're automatically sent, of course, to Factory Talk Alignment Events. Um, but notice here, they're calling this Factory Talk Links. I think on one of the slides they explained that, but yeah, they renamed RS Links Enterprise to Factory Talk Links. Probably a good idea because having two RS Links is confusing. <laughs> In any case, all right, so now they're talking about safety instructions for the Kinetics 5700. Um, you know, I'm just going to go through this. I've never do a lot of safety or, or, or motion. You know how to get the presentation if you're interested in that. SIP Energy 2, new support for that. And um, they talk about security. Security is something that's very important, but um, uh, beyond what most of my students need to learn, so I haven't uh, really spent a lot of time on that, as well as licensing. Now, I mean, I don't want to really get into uh, Connected Components Workbench because that's a different presentation, but I do want to get into uh, the View Designer Enhancements here. So let's go down and take a look at it. We uh, In the previous hardware presentation, we talked about the hardware. So I um, just want to talk about the um, uh, tag logging. The tags now can be logged as fast as every 500 milliseconds. That is extremely slow. <laughs> I, I just, I think it's 50 milliseconds in the PNW plus seven. So I don't know what they're thinking there. Um, but Hey, at least it has data logging now and historical trending. The product when it released, didn't even have that. So that's been in, um, well, the PNW plus since it came out. Right. So, um, and you can test run a project now that's huge. I just can't see me. I just can't see me trying this product without that feature. So that's a huge feature. Uh, I can't wait to try that out. So, uh, and, and what that means is if you're not familiar with that, with RSV32 and then with uh, View Studio, um, you know, this is we're going all the way back to GWiz. I have a, a beta copy of RSV32 or RSV or Control View for Windows is what it was originally called before it actually released. But uh, I have a beta copy of it. And since that product came out, I'm thinking it's 1995. In Rockwell SCADA packages, and then when the PNLV Plus came out, their HMI packages, you've been able to uh, not only test run your graphic display to see what the graphics look like, but test run the entire project on your PC before you uh, before you actually deployed it. And in the case of uh, Machine Edition, before you downloaded it to your PNLV uh, Plus. So not having this in the PNLV 5000, to me, you know, I as, if I was a developer, I probably would have stayed away from it until I got that. So now test running a project with an emulator. I don't know what that emulator means. I think that means it's, I don't think it means you have to have um, Logix emulate 5000. I think they're saying they're, they're going to emulate the, uh, the uh, screens for you. Um, and that's going to come with uh, view designer. So it'll be very interesting to see. Um, they also do in PDF viewer, VNC, and then load from removable media. Nothing, nothing we haven't seen before. And I think at that point, um, I'm going to let you read the rest of it if you're interested in the rest of it. But that kind of gives us an overview of some of the highlights of what's new with uh, Studio 5000 uh, Logic Designer and View Designer. And um, if you thought this was helpful, please give me a thumbs up and a like. And if you know anybody who'd like to learn all about programming uh, 
you know, Alan Bradley control logics controllers. Um, why not send them over to the automation school.com to check out my PAC basics control logics course. It's uh, one of my most popular courses. It's well over eight hours in length and growing. You know, I've recently added, recently in the last few months, added uh, integrating VFDs on Ethernet. I've added uh, Plant PAX. Those lessons get a lot of kudos. People really love those. Um, this analog in there, the scaling in there, this function block, sequential function chart, structured text. Um, so if you know anybody looking to learn control logics, have them check it out. There's two versions. One's 99. It's the standard version. And then the extended version that is going to grow over time, that's over eight hours now and will continue to grow, is uh, $2.99. And with that, that's the end of this video. So until next time, peace.